Recording. There we go. Uh, welcome, everybody. This is Computer Science One Programming uh, and Methods. Uh, we're going to be using C++. I'm Professor David Jones. Uh, I thought I'd tell you guys a little bit about myself before I got into the thing. I got a little slideshow for you. So we'll go through that. Do a slideshow. So that's me. Why is it not saying there we go? Uh, that's me. I am a former student here. I attended here. I left here in 2011, I want to say. I went to UC Merced where I graduated with a 4.0 in mathematics or applied mathematics and physics and computer imaging. And I went to UC Santa Cruz for grad school where I studied applied math and statistics. And I've interned at NASA a few times, so I've got some contacts there that I like to do stuff with from time to time. But I am originally from here, COS. I am a dog person. I, I cats are all right, uh, but I'm, I prefer the dogs. In fact, why is it showing the next slide? I don't like that. That is my dog, Astro. His name is Astro. Uh, at the time of this picture, he weighed about three and a half pounds. He's about five and a half, six now though. This winter he's decided he's gonna actually eat rather than be picky. Uh, he's a teacup Maltese and he's a little teddy bear. I like superheroes, uh, the Avengers and stuff like that. Of those, I like Iron Man the most. Uh, Star-Lord's pretty cool. Eh, Captain America, not so much. He just throws around a metal disc, not too exciting. I like Groot. Groot's pretty good. Hey, um, are you sharing your screen? Uh, it should be. Is it not sharing? Um, if it Let is, I'm go not back seeing and it. Hit share. I'm not seeing it. I can't see it. Yeah, sorry, I'm not I'm seeing it either. I'm glad you said something. Yeah, sorry, I'm seeing it either. Thank you. <laughs> Let's try that again. Yeah, there we go. All right. Go. Can you? All right. That's great. Yeah, it's there. All right, so that's me. You heard the spiel about who I am. Don't need to say that again. Uh, that was to say I'm a, a math person or a dog person. There's my dog, Astro, in case. Uh, well, I know you didn't see him before. We've had him for about eight years. He's really small. He, he's a howler. I like superheroes, Iron Man and stuff like that. You heard all that. I know the show with superheroes or super people is the boys that I like. I don't wouldn't call them heroes though. They're borderline villains, if not villains. That's a good show. Boys is good stuff. Uh, I like to read. This is the one of the logos for Wheel of Time. It's a recently been made a show on Amazon Prime. Uh, and they don't do a very good job as an adaptation of a book, but from people that haven't read the books, they liked it. Uh, I do like to read a lot of things. I read uh, mostly science fiction and fantasy. I've been reading Brandon Sanderson a lot. I re haven't read most of his stuff. I like Harry Dresden uh, by Jim Butcher. That's a good read, a lot of good reads. He's a wizard in Chicago. And I've been reading Monster Hunters International by Larry Correa, I think is his name. Uh, so I, I'm a fantasy reader, sci-fi reader. My mouse just went away. I like comedies, watching things that make me laugh. Big Bang Theory is one of them. I've been watching Home Economics on TV lately, The Keenan Show, Saturday Night Live, stuff like that. I'm a gamer. This is World of Warcraft. Uh, the Lich King. This is a long time. I haven't played World of Warcraft in a while, but when I played, uh, I played in vanilla WoW and a little bit past, like up to where they had the pandas first start playing. I was raid leader in the first edition of World of Warcraft called Vanilla WoW for uh, Molten Core and Blackwing Lair. And it would have, you could take 40 people with you on raids, uh, which is a lot bigger than games nowadays. A lot of times it's 10 or 12, 15, something like that. Back then it was 40. And uh, for a while there, for when we went raiding, 
uh, we could go into a dungeon when we first started doing like for molten core. Uh, we went in there and we didn't kill even the guy at the front door. Like the first monster we saw, we couldn't kill him in eight, eight hours uh, of continuous play. And over the next six months, we ended up clearing all the dungeon, all eight bosses within two hours. And I think that was pretty good. Uh, the I had probably about 20% of the people were high at the time. I know because they'd hold down their mic when they were on uh, uh, Discord uh, to let their bong rip bubble through. Uh, and the reason why I put it is, well, first off, this is a programming class. And what's a better use of programming than video games? I love video games. I'm a gamer. And another thing I put it there for is because I didn't know what to put when I applied for NASA for leadership skills, so I included that. So I interned at NASA a couple times. Both times it was at uh, the Ames Research Center in Mountain View, California. It's near San Jose. Uh, you could probably hit, if you've got a good arm with a football, you could hit Google headquarters from it. They're literally right next door. Uh, this is a building there that they have there. It's called Sustainability Base. It's like a mock-up of a lunar building, a building you could build on the moon. Uh, the only thing that's different about it is that the windows and stuff actually open. But it generates all its own electricity. It recycles like 95% of its water. It's a state-of-the-art, self-sustaining building. It's pretty cool. Uh, another thing I worked at when I was at now, why is my mouse not working? There it is. Another thing I worked at while I was there was in the um, aeromechanics branch. Aeromechanics governs flight. They have a great flight center there. They've got a wind, one of the biggest wind tunnels. It's 80 by 80 foot by 120 foot. And they have doors on the side that you can open up the doors and literally lift a Boeing 747 with a hook and put it inside. And it was a wind tunnel, so they generate different wind conditions with smoke and test how flight stuff goes. Uh, I was working on the computerized side of it. What we see on the screen here is the profile of the side view of a helicopter uh, blade. And it's got a little curve to it. And depending on what angle the wind hits it at and the curvature of that blade, it generates different uh, amounts of lift and drag and, and stuff like that. And the idea was to maximize the lift and minimize the drag so that it took less fuel or less energy to get the helicopter to go up. Uh, this was a tedious project though. And you could leave the, the, the computer programming running for eight hours and finally would turn it back. Uh, Ames Research Center has a supercomputer there. I think it was the Pleiades. I imagine it's bigger now. But I had a lot of computers work at working for me. We would use Perl and a couple other computer programming languages. Uh, and so I, I've worked there a few times. I've let, we've taken field trips with, with the SETA club to NASA. I'm trying to aim for one this spring if the damn pandemic would stop because uh, the government facilities are shut down. Well, at least not available to the public for now. I did tell you I went to UC Santa Cruz. Uh, this is part of what I was studying there. Uh, this may look like an alien or something like that. This is the side profile of a tube of plasma in our sun. So the sun is made of hot plasma and it's magnetic and different tubes of plasma ha might have different magnetic properties. Magnetic properties can affect uh, its buoyancy and cause it to lift. And so this was modeling uh, a cord of plasma rising to the surface and coming out of the top of the, uh, and, and this is where you see like the corona mass injections and stuff like that, solar flares. When it gets to the surface, it looks like something like that. Uh, I was using Fortran 90 there. It's a common one for science stuff. Uh, and they had, a supercomputer as well. It wasn't as big as NASA's. Uh, but again, letting it run for eight hours and eventually getting results. NASA's was definitely faster. Uh, but I would spend a lot of time waiting for stuff to run. 
I was doing my grad school there. I was working on a PhD. I was one year short of a PhD and I got so tired of doing this stuff, just waiting forever for it to run. And then it would tell me it didn't run. Uh, it took a couple of years to figure it out. I stopped with my master's because uh, when I was at COS, they said, if you want to teach, come back. We'll see about getting you a job here because I was a tutor here. I went from tutoring here uh, and leading the academic excellent workshop workshops in Mesa. And it ended up getting me a job back here. So next slide. I like food. I don't know if you saw from my picture. I'm a big guy, heavy guy. My wife's the tamale person. She loves tamales the most. I enjoy most kinds of food, but Mexican is probably my favorite. I like coffee. Enough said. I mean, what else can you say about that? Coffee's coffee. He's one of my favorites. If you think that's Darth Vader, you're wrong. That's Lord Vader. Uh, people like Luke Skywalker are chumps. They suck. Lord Vader was cool. I'm very much a bad, the bad guy kind of guy. And you saw that with the, the boys earlier. In fact, when we are on campus, if you see a Chevy Bolt around with Darth Vader stuff, that's my car. Please don't tag it. Most people like Yoda, though. Uh, this is something he said in one of the recent ones. And he was talking about how Luke Skywalker did not pass on failure. <clears throat> when you are programming in this class, you are going to do so many things wrong and you it's going to frustrate you so much but you just got to keep trying and eventually figure out what you did wrong and it's very satisfying when you finally do uh so that's that's the best i can say about it don't give up if you get frustrated we've got a bunch of ways that you can communicate with me with adrian and our si and we'll see that you learn the material I imagine there are people in this class that know the material a lot better than I do. They're taking this class just to get the credits, but they've been, you've been dabbling with programming, if not dabbling, doing it a lot for years, for many years. So I bet there's people in here that know it better than I do, which is fine. Another show I like, Mandalorian, good stuff. This is the way. Looking forward to that starting back up. Another match. Masked person I like. This is Samus Aran from Metroid. I'm a like I said, I'm a gamer right now. I'm playing Metroid Dread on my Switch. Uh, I'm about a third of the way through, I think. I enjoy it. Played Legend of Zelda on the Switch a lot too. Uh, in fact, of the extended bonus dungeons that you can get, all the downloadable content. I think there's a total of 120 shrines, and I've done 119 or something like that. And the last one just opens up on a three hour timer and I did refuse to stick around and play for three hours. So I just haven't beat it yet, which is kind of stupid, but that's where it is. I also have PlayStation, uh, PlayStation 4 for a while. This is the VR, I have it. I played a few games on it. I got a bunch of games for it, but I've not played that many because they tend to make me sick. And I'm still learning how to deal with uh, some motion sickness, trying that out. I do have a PS5. I've been playing Demon Souls on it. It's probably my favorite video game type of games, Dark Souls and Dark Souls, Souls likes games. Uh, what are the one, other ones right now? Oh, hell, I can't think of it. There's other ones that are like Souls but aren't named Dark Souls. Also in that category is The Witcher. I like playing The Witcher, Witcher 3. I've played for over 100 hours uh and did all the content in it so i do like the game right now on my playstation 5 i'm playing mortal shell it's a ps4 game but i'm almost done with it i got one dungeon left it's kind of souls like speaking of the witcher i like watch a lot of tv shows with my wife i've been married for it'll be 18 years this april uh and we like watching the witcher she hasn't she like she used to play video games with me more, but is very very casual. Uh, but she likes the video game or she likes shows. We've been enjoying The Witcher. We enjoyed the newest season. Speaking about the shows, I like I like John Oliver. It's on HBO Max. He makes me laugh. <coughs> Got some uh, interesting information there. 
other TV shows I like, Lucifer, good show. It was uh, on TV, got canceled. And then a bunch of us, I was part of this campaign I, on Facebook, social media, kept plugging Save Lucifer and I Love Lucy. Uh, and Netflix picked it up at the end and saw it all the way through. They just finished Lucifer's show, I want to say, this last winter. Excellent stuff. I love Lucifer. Great show. Another favorite of mine, Dexter. In fact, Dexter New Blood, they just aired the final episode of the new season. Uh, what was it, Sunday, yesterday? Uh, they, it aired actually 9 p.m. It aired at midnight Sunday morning, Eastern time, so 9 p.m. on Saturday. So my wife and I watched it Saturday night at like 9.05. Uh, we both like Dexter, serial killer by day or by night, uh, forensic blood spatter analyst for the Miami Metro uh, Police Department during the day. Good show. A lot of violent tendencies and stuff I like. Game of Thrones. I like dragons. I like all sorts of stuff like that. Uh, this show had a lot of stuff in it, and it was a pretty good adapt adaptation of the books. They had to change some stuff, obviously, but a lot of the characters were very true and stuff like that. <coughs> Other things I like watching with my wife, Survivor. We watched like all of the uh, seasons except for maybe the first one or two. I started watching it when I worked for the Diocese of Fresno. It's the Catholic Church. I was doing counting there and they had a season where it was guys versus girls. And I was the only guy in the accounting department of eight people. So we had a wager going on. I, I still don't remember if guys or girls won that season. I'm gonna have to look it up, uh, but we've been hooked ever since. In fact, this, uh, this last fall, my wife and I found Australian Survivor on Paramount Plus. That's kind of fun. If you like Survivor, uh australian survivor has harder challenges and stuff like that and they all they talk all that aussie language and then whenever they have a reward challenge you're like what the hell are they eating so you'd have to go we went and looked stuff up it's fun stuff this is the originals uh, i watched vampire diaries the originals we're watching me and my wife are watching a discovery of witches right now i like vampire stuff in fact, I, I'd like to be a vampire if I could live forever and, and keep my sanity. You know, you know, I, I'm okay with killing people. I think I think I could do it. I, I have a hard time catching people, so uh, you know, I'm not going to chase them down very well. I'm not very quick, but everybody's got to sleep sometime. Too bad the uh, vampirism is probably not real. Pixar, Lightning McQueen. Uh, I like the Pixar shows. I like all the, the movies and stuff like that. One of the, that's one of the reasons why this is on here. Another reason is I am a Jack Kent Cook Scholar. It's a national scholarship, uh, and you can get get a transfer. It's a transfer scholarship, and you get up to like fifty thousand a year for any school you go to if you get this scholarship. Uh, they tend to get mostly straight A students or like three point eight or higher, and they like students that are are giving to or giving of their time and helping others. The reason why I mentioned this is the first student, the first other scholar I met now works at Pixar. He's one of the lead designers. He made a bunch of them. Every time a new one comes out, I message him like, did you work on this? And, yep. Uh, in fact, he's writing a fantasy series right now. Uh, and I'm doing his alpha read. I'm one of his alpha readers. It's pretty good. I like it. But I know people from Jack and Cut. I know people from all over the world doing all sorts of cool stuff. So we get, I get good connections, stuff like that. If you can get a national scholarship, it's awesome. Indiana Jones, I like him, good stuff. In fact, I wanted, one of the reasons I wanted a PhD is so I could be Dr. Jones too, uh, but it became not worth it. I just got tired of waiting for the- Okay, computer. I'm done. Are you done? Okay, I'm not. This is Jurassic Park. If you hear me say clever girl, I'm referencing this. It's usually because you did something smart and it doesn't matter if you're a guy or a girl, if you do something smart, I'll probably say clever girl. I like dinosaurs and stuff like that. 
Uh, this is Back to the Future. I love time travel stuff. It's always very fascinating. That is Tiamat, a five-headed dragon. I play Dungeons and Dragons. I uh, usually I'm going to be playing. Uh, I'm doing DMing on Tuesday nights this uh, semester, uh, and I like this because it's kind of like a twist on the Skittles uh, "Taste the Rainbow." But the team has got five different dragon heads all on one body, and they're all a different color. So I like role playing games and stuff like that. I see chat up. Oh, Bloodborne. That's the net game I was trying to think of, Adrian. And Horizon Zero Dawn is also pretty good. I'm waiting for, uh, what is it, Horizon Zero West? Yeah, yeah, the new one coming out, like, I think this month, for uh, Forbidden West, I think it is. Yeah, yeah. Is. Uh, Elrin yeah, looks great. pretty good, too. Yeah, those are great. Uh, Tyson, oh, yeah. basing code. I'm going to assume people in this class don't know any coding. So if you've had any coding, you have a head start. That's for Tyson. Just notice the chat, sorry. We're almost done with the slides of the boring, or the boring get to know your instructor. I like music. I like uh, oldies music. I like uh, classic rock the most. This is the logo for the Rolling Stones. I like a lot of stuff. I listen to a lot of music, but mostly older music. Don't cheat. While apps like PhotoMath and Socratic won't help you in this class, I know there are plenty of ways to look up, how do I code this type of problem up? And it will tell you. You can find websites that will tell you how to do this shit. And if you copy and paste it, I'm going to know. I'm going to go look at, I'm going to go look up for a common like lab or stuff like that. I'm going to look up and see if you copy and paste it. Don't copy and paste. However, you can't work with other people. We're, we've got wet methods set up. We're going to use Discord. Uh, to help facilitate discussion and stuff like that for when we're not in class. Uh, I don't mind you learning and helping each other learn, but do not take someone else's work and copy it and say that it's your own. You can learn from their work and, and come learn how to put your own twist on it, but definitely don't copy. In fact, if you copy, you're probably not gonna learn shit and you're gonna, this isn't gonna help you. If you don't like cussing, you're probably in the wrong class. I do like to cuss. I've actually been cussing light today. I am a, a cusser. I've been trying to taper it down because some people get offended, but presumably we're almost all adults here. Everyone should be 18 or older. And I think you can take it. Having said that, you can get an A plus on the final exam. You can get an A plus in this class. You just got to do the work. It's going to take a lot of work. You might, you're going to mess up a lot of times. Okay. Let me clear out that thing. Let's go back to our class. Uh, I'll stop sharing. Let's see. We had what's going on in chat now. Oh, it's okay, David. Are there any questions so far? All right, so let's take a look at the screen. Our, uh, let's go to our class. So if you go into Canvas and you go into our course, in fact, I'll click on it fresh so you'll see where we step in at. Uh, our course, you'll have a different list. These are all the courses I'm either teaching or I'm sitting in on Econ 40 and 50 right now to learn how to help Econ students that are taking math classes, be a better assistant for them. But for your class, Programming Concepts and Methods 1. So this is where you'll land when you come into the class. I strongly encourage you to check announcements. It will give you lots of information. In fact, I'm betting many of you found how to get here through this with the opening day Zoom session. You will always be able to get to our class for Zoom. You can either click on Hefe's Zoom room when you're trying to log in, that'll take you here to the Zoom classroom. Uh, or you can also click on Confer Zoom 
and there will be a link here. I had to click host. If you miss classes or you're not able to attend for whatever reason, it's not required, after the uh, Zoom has done process, processing the stuff, it will come over here and do event recordings. You can come to this tab and do event recordings here. Okay. I'm going to hit Windows R again because I think it stopped recording as soon as I switched screen. Yeah, it did. The game bar one doesn't record as well. Okay, so you can hit event recordings and it shouldn't have any now, uh, but it will. So, oh, it's showing that it's doing it. If you check for recordings now and you're not going to get nothing. But if you miss class, that's where you can do it. I will also, when when it's done, I will download it and upload it to YouTube. That's easier for people to watch on their phone or whatnot. Uh, so those are ways you can get to it. Most of our work is getting many done in modules. Is there anything else on the home screen I want to talk about first? Let's go check it that again. So you're here taking C++. There are a lot of programming languages. Uh, C++ is a derivative of C, one of the oldest programming languages, but there's other ones. Uh, we will not have a textbook that you have to buy. I will cover the free, there's a link to it here. Uh, we'll look at it in a second. There's my name, there's my email. You can always email me and uh, get a hold of me. Uh, and there's other ways to get a hold of me. We'll, you'll see it in the syllabus in a second. So we'll click on modules. Why has it got Adrian pinned on my picture? Interesting. Huh. All right, uh, let's go to student view. Where is student view? Come on, click. Okay. Why is it loading slow? There we go. Okay, so student view. Uh, here, we'll just go through some of them. This is where you're going to want to start. Some of you already have. So we, it's brand new for the school. We've only had it a little while. I don't know that anyone's even gotten the associate's degree yet. We are one of the, the few community colleges in the state. I, mean, I think maybe half of them have it now, an associate's degree in computer science. Uh, in fact, if we look at it, you can see the courses you need to take. Many of them you will already be taking. Uh, so if you're working on like math or physics or engineering or something like that, and you're here just taking programming for fun, uh, you will cover these math and physics courses right here already. You're taking CSCI one, you're more than likely going to take number two. Uh, if you just take a couple more, you'll have an associate's degree in computer programming. So that's kind of fun. Back to there. And so we'll be doing C++. It's an algorithm development and object-oriented program design class. Uh, we're going to do a lot of coding, a lot of debugging. I'll show you debugging as we're going through it. I know there are programs out there that help you debug, like GDB and stuff like that. I don't recommend using them. Maybe when you know what you're doing and it's speeding it up. But I think using something like that while you're learning the code is going to slow down how well you learn it. I think the debugging on your own helps you learn some stuff. So keep that in mind. These are the semesters those classes are taught. Uh, or were, they used to be. Uh, with the addition, this is my first semester teaching this course. Previously, Professor Redden was the only one teaching it. 
I'm joining him now to help. And so we might have more than just CSCI one in fall and CSCI two in spring, as you know, because you're taking CSCI one in spring right now. So we're expanding on that. I'm gonna have to update the slide. The next, I clicked next, or you can open up modules and go to there again. Uh, next thing, it talks about the course overview. I will be doing lectures on Monday night from 4.10 to almost 7. Again, we'll take breaks in there, uh, but you don't, and we'll, we're more than likely will be done early on some of the days, uh, but the videos will always be recorded and shared later. Wow, it's just stopped recording right now on its own, the game, the game bar. Okay, I'll have to figure out another way to record remotely. Uh, and then on Wednesday night, we're also going to have something from 410 to 550. This is a four-unit class, but it's technically supposed to be three units of lecture and three units of lab hours. And with having online and remote stuff and other ways of meeting with each other, we don't really need all those hours. Uh, so it won't. Wednesday is half the time going to be a SI session led by uh, Adrian. He'll walk you, you guys can study on things you're working on, discuss stuff like that. He's gone through the class. He knows what he's doing. Uh, he's our sign club president. Uh, and then on other Wednesdays, I will be here and we'll cover some more material. Uh, and again, these will always be recorded and shared later on. Uh, there will be text to read. It's all online. You should read it. The quizzes are frequently based on the reading. Uh, so keep that in mind. There will be labs to do and stuff like that, which we're all going to basically detail programming. So that's our graded programming assignments or our labs. We'll have the weekly online quizzes. There will be two exams and a, a final exam. Timed, part of it will be timed. There will be like a multiple choice thing in Canvas that will be timed. But most of the exams are actual coding. And I'm going to give you uh, several days to get it done. So you don't need to feel like you got to get it rushed in a day. I have two calendars on this page. One is what we're going to be covering on the Mondays and Wednesdays. And you can see what days are sessions, what days I'm covering material, stuff like that. You can see when our exams are. Uh, Wednesday, February 23rd, we will start the exam uh, Wednesday. And it'll go through Saturday night at midnight. So you'll have Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or Thursday, Friday, Saturday and part of Wednesday, if we start it right after class or if it's available at midnight. Uh, I forget what I have it set up for. But you're gonna have several days to get the actual lab part done, okay? But you can see what we're covering when. We're just starting off with simple stuff like how to see out means do output to the screen so people can see stuff. Uh, uh, data types and variables is a lot like algebra, except we take variables to the next level. And we'll cover a lot of these things. Uh, many of these, what you're going to be doing, oftentimes in this class, is what you would do with algebra, but you got to stop and think about what am I actually doing with the algebra and tell the computer to do that for you. What? Okay. Uh, we do have spring break in there. It's the week of the 11th through the 15th of April. My birthday's in there. Uh, it says Hefe's birthday. I go by El Hefe. You can call me Dave, David, Jones, Professor Jones. I get a lot of sir, which makes me feel old. Uh, but sir works as well. You know, whatever, whatever you feel like call, calling me, uh, unless you think I'm going to find it offensive. You probably don't want to do that. Like Hefe, for a long time, first person that called me Hefe was uh, someone at NASA. I was taking, he was another intern. I was picking, he, picking him up and driving him to uh, NASA with me. We'd drop his girls off at a daycare center. 
because he came from Puerto Rico. And uh, he kept calling me El Jefe, and Jefe sounds like heifer to me. It sounds like a cow, and I thought he was making a fat joke. And when he told me what it meant, how uh, it means boss or chief, he smirked, did a little like a half ass smile. So for the longest time, I thought he was just fucking with me uh, until I finally looked it up. And I'm like, yeah, I kind of like that. That's a good one. So we'll have a couple of tests in there. Uh, you can see them, exam one and two. We'll do our second exam right before spring break so that you do not have to be thinking about that over spring break. And final, you'll have a good long while. Of, you'll have Monday after our review on May 9th through Saturday, May 14th. Uh, five days to do the final. It sh shouldn't take you that long, but you'll have a good chunk of time. Uh, those are our lecture dates and what we're going to be doing on those days. I also have the last drop date to drop with a W is Friday, March 18th. And what is it? I want to say it's... Friday the 28th, it's on the syllabus. So we'll see where the first drop date is if you think about dropping. There's also another calendar list on here. This is when assignments will be due. So I'll just collect all that. Well, I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. Oh, there's the first, uh, the first drop date, Monday, January 24th. Uh, this is a list of when the labs will be due, uh, just so you know ahead of time. So that's what we have on the course tab. But we'll be covering a lot of stuff. Okay. Let's go to the next page. Any questions so far? I've been talking for a while. Let me take a drink. All right. Next page is course content. Uh, we've got two free textbooks, really. The first one is learning with C++. We'll click on it. How to think like a computer scientist. That's really what this class is all about. Learning to, you've been learning how to do math and stuff like that. And computer science, while it often does the same operations as mathematics, it's a different way of thinking because you, you have to really think about what you've been doing and get the computer to do it for you. Uh, but this has got a lot of stuff in it. We'll reference this frequently, like chapter one, the way of the program. It's got some good stuff in there. In fact, there's a Hello World program, I think, down here that we will copy and paste in a little bit. You will all, there's also a book that goes, or the book that goes with it. It's a PDF you can take a look at. As you can see here, feel free to download if you'd like. It'll pop up in a second. And another one that's an online great site is c++.com. This is kind of like the operating manual, the rule book. We'll reference this a lot during the semester. Uh, it, you can click on a lot of things, either here in this section over or over on the left. What we'll be covering soon is variables and stuff like that. Oh, no, I do not want an ad. Thank you. And it kind of walks you through how to do it. It gives you, well, it gives you, tells you a lot of the stuff. Then they give examples like down below. They give you examples of what your screen shows and what the output is, stuff like that. So this is also another valuable resource that we'll be using. It, it's, a, it's in Layu of a textbook. So you shouldn't have to buy anything. If you do want to buy something, this is the book I used when I learned uh, C++. I took it at COS back in like 2008. And I don't know who I had because it wasn't John Redden, but the teacher sucked. I took C++ here and I, because I came to school to be a programmer. I wanted to make video games. And the teacher was so bad that, or not really... He wasn't helpful. When I asked questions, he couldn't, he kind of just like waved his finger at the book uh, and like a magic wand or some shit. And that didn't help. But this is the book we used and it's still good today. $6.99, cheap book to have as a resource next to you. It just shows you how cheap you can get some of these books. 
so that's a nice resource if you want to use. I'm going to pull a lot of examples for our labs and stuff from it. So it's a great, great source material for me. All right, so programming, actual programming. What we're going to be, I'm going to be using and demonstrating stuff on is on Microsoft Visual Studios 2022. It just came out in, I want to say November, maybe right after Halloween. Uh, the previous one was 2019. I think 2019 is what's installed at the schools. It will still work. I have made a video on how to install this. You can watch it later, but I'll, I'll walk you to the website and stuff right now. Uh, this works really, really well on Windows computers. It may work on Macs, I'm not sure. Uh, but if you have a Mac, we'll cover some more stuff like that later well, in a little bit. For Windows users, This is a link to the Microsoft Center. And you really just want to click download Visual Studios. You want to get Community 2022. Uh, and when you do, it'll ask you for your login credentials. Just use your COS login and password. And it'll log you in and everything will be free. And it will look a lot like what I'm going to use in this semester. And to see how to install that, I think this video right here is seven minutes. I, I literally uninstalled it on my computer and then recorded it so I could show you the process of installing because it, it can be a little tricky. Uh, we're going to do something like this in a little bit, creating and accessing the projects or labs that you do. We'll do that right at the end of this section or today, but there's another shorter video here in case you want to look at it again to go over it. Uh, do note you should be using an empty project. I'll show you that in a little bit each time. Uh, while you're learning it, you should be starting fresh, not copying something over and editing it. Uh, I know it's an easy tendency to want to do. I know I struggled to not do it when I was learning the material. It's really easy to go, okay, my project, the new project is going to be similar to this one. Let me copy this one and just adapt it. But then I end up not typing some of the commands and stuff, and I've, it made it harder to learn. Uh, we'll go over that in a little bit. If you have a Chromebook, Chromebooks tend to be app-based. Uh, there is a, a decent one you can check out that's an online one that I'll show you in a little bit. Uh, but you'll want to just Google or do an internet search on IDE for Chromebook. Okay, IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment. Uh, it's uh, you'll see that's what Microsoft Visual Studios 2022 is. It's an IDE. If you have Mac, one of the better ones to do is the Eclipse program. It's free, but there are other ones. If you have a Mac, you can Google or well, do an internet search for IDE for Mac. Uh, I don't have a Mac, so I my help to you will be very limited in getting it installed. Chromebooks, you'll have, again, I don't have a Chromebook. You'll have to look for that. One thing you can use, at least for a couple of weeks until you find the IDE that you like, is down here. This one's pretty simple. It's w3schools.com. And it takes you to a compiler. You can type the stuff here and click run. And we'll do some testing of this in a little bit. And so this will get you going, but it's not very good for debugging and finding errors. It won't tell you where you messed up if you messed up, like Visual Studios will. I see chats just popped up. Is there any way you can update what? 2019 to 2022? Is that what you're talking about, Juan? I had to reinstall it. Uh, it they're different programs. In fact, you can have both of them running on your computer at the same time. But if you're using 2019, you already got it downloaded, you don't need to switch. You know, uh, I did like 12, be honest, I did like 2022 better. I was taking, I was working with Professor Redden and doing some uh, Unity stuff at the end of the semester, last semester. Both of us are starting to dabble with Unity. And we were trying on that. And the IntelliSense, the auto completion was 
superior on the 2022. Uh, so, but if you've got 2019 already installed or one, a different IDE that you like, you don't have to change. Okay. The, whichever one you like that works for you, please use it. So, but the one I use is going to be the Digital Studios because it's free for the school and I know how to use it. Okay. Uh, let's see. And we'll we'll do stuff with that W3 schools bit in a second. I'll show you doing the same code in it and in Visual Studios. So what your first day task, what you should probably get done either today or tomorrow is the introduce yourself assignment, which I believe is next, uh, which I'm gonna use for attendance. That way I know who's taking the class and who's not. I'll take attendance from that because I have to submit it. Uh, and you can navigate and complete lab 1A. We'll, we'll take a look at something similar to that in a little bit. Uh, but you will be, be doing a lot of hands-on programming. Uh, it might be good to, if you, a lot of students I've found have liked uh, programming it up simultaneously while watching what I'm doing. I found it a little hard to do myself when I was learning it because I'd have to switch back and forth between screens while I'm listening or watching on Zoom. Uh, but if, you, if you've got two screens or two monitors, it's quite easy. Uh, but be prepared to take some, uh, do some practice and stuff like that. So I'm going to click on modules for a second because we're not going to walk through all of them. The introduce yourself is where you, you what you need to have done by Wednesday night. Okay, get that done soon. The other ones in here, the making time for what's important is extra credit. It's got two stages, making a calendar of what you do in a week and then actually tracking what you do and just submitting like a one page paper. It'll be extra credit for your grade. Uh, that one will. Uh, but the other ones you should do, uh, I put one in here on maintaining your integrity because I have found as an teacher instructing online during the pandemic that a lot of people that wouldn't normally cheat in a regular semester have found it easier to fall behind on their assignments. And therefore they feel like pressured to stay. They don't wanna lose their grade and they can, they'll try to cheat. Last semester out of my three algebra classes, uh, on the third exam, when I really started checking it, I, over half the students, over half, uh, had used uh, online or phone apps, photo math or Socratic, literally typed word for word, comment for comment, symbol for symbol, typed that or wrote that down and submitted it as their exam. Not, and so I had to give out a lot of Fs last semester. I even gave them a chance to make it up, uh, but they'd kind of fallen too far behind. Don't fall far, don't fall too far behind. This video will, it's a, it's got a, it's a short video. I think it's five minutes or so when you get to the integrity one. On tips on how, and how to stay caught up, please don't make me fail you. Please stay caught up. <clears throat> there, let's take a look at the syllabus. I think it's, Hopefully hooked here. Actually, let's take a little uh, uh, five minute break, 10 minute break. What do you guys think? Any opinions? That sounds good. You guys want to take a break? All right, let's take a break. Let's, uh, let's come back at it's 5.02 now. Let's come back at 5.10. That's eight minutes. That'll work. I'm not going anywhere, but I will stop recording for now. Pause. All right. We're back from break. We'll take a look at our syllabus, <clears throat> which you can access right here in syllabus tab. How much down will that go? Okay. Uh, so it's got my name, it's got my email, you know you're in CRN, the CRN. The class is technically asynchronous, so you do not need to attend. Uh, I hope you do. It gives you the opportunity to ask questions. 
and stuff like that and make this a little more fun if I interact with people. Class is a hell of a lot boring than me sitting up here going Bueller, Bueller, anyone? So if you're here, that's great, but it's asynchronous. And we talked about the times before, but they're listed here. I'm also going to hold office hours starting tomorrow from 11 to 12 on the same way. Click on FA Zoom Room. Or you can access me by appointment. Last semester, I had a student that uh, was raising a family, was working in a nursing spot. I don't know what she, what she did, but she was literally only available from like 6 to 7.30 a.m. on Tuesday morning. So we met on from 6 to 7.30 a.m. on Tuesday morning, and she ended up being the top student in her class. Uh, so I, I'm willing to make time for you. We just got to make an appointment if it's not a normal time. I do have hours online in the math lab. I will get them posted. They're on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays, but I'll post them as an announcement, uh, hopefully tonight, if not tonight, tomorrow morning. <coughs> We referenced these two textbooks earlier in a previous page. And I just wanted to let you know, I pledge to do my very best to help each and every one of you perform at your highest level possible. Uh, that, does, that means getting you to learn the material and do your best uh, and help you get there. It can be a challenge, but we'll get you there. As you know, this class is being taught remote, as you can see. Uh, course objectives, this is an introductory sequence for the computer science, introductory course for the computer science sequence of programs. Uh, there's a list of things that we will be talking about at the end of the syllabus, but it's kind of boring here. Uh, but we'll be working on that. Uh, you can use, can, you'll see what here for me from Canvas announcements. Discord, which I have a link to over here, but I don't know that I actually put the invite anywhere. So I think as soon as when, when this class is over, I'm gonna go grab the Discord uh, invite and put it up here. Uh, we'll take a look at Discord in a second though. Me and Adrian are already in it. Uh, and then obviously you can have contact with me through Zoom showing up. Uh, there's ways to have contact between yourself. I've tried using Canvas before to have inner discussions and stuff like that. It doesn't work very well. Uh, so for anything that's not graded, like building study groups and stuff like that, and, and working together, learning from together, students tend to like Discord more. It's the more, so I like Discord. I'm a gamer. Why not? Let's use it. <clears throat> uh, if you need an interpreter for Zoom, uh, let me know. We can arrange that to happen. <clears throat> Grading policies, uh, I don't know why I have lecture videos in grading policies. It seems like an odd spot to put it, but I have it in the homework there. Uh, homework will be due on Tuesdays at midnight on the days the schedule you saw on the other page. It's also at the bottom of the syllabus. So there's a lot of spots for the schedules. And Canvas will also tell you when it's due also. Uh, this class consists of C++ programming projects in which problem solving will be emphasized. The solution is very little credit in this class, to be honest. It's the, the getting there is, is all the work for programming. Now, the language C++ is considered a, a higher level language uh, simply because we can use put in English words and stuff like that oftentimes, and it works as commands. Computers don't read it that way. Uh, it reads it as binary, and we'll, we'll talk about connections between that later, but we chose C++. Uh, why? There's a lot of programs out there you, we could have used. We could have used Python. We could have used Java, uh, C or C Sharp. C Sharp is used by uh, Unity. C++ is used by the Unreal Engine, I believe. <coughs> There's a, a lot of different ones out there we could have used. We chose this one because it's in a lot of situations an industry standard right now. It can, it's just a slight bit harder to pick up than maybe Java, like maybe 10% harder. Not, but once you kind of learn one of these languages, all you're really learning is what the commands, to learn another computer programming language, you're just learning what the commands are in that language. The ideas of how to do algorithms and create objects and stuff like that translate from language to language. 
our control loops, uh, things like that. It all translates is just generally the code is different words. Okay. Uh, homework, we'll have lots of, of it. As soon as we finish on a module, I'll let you know during a lecture when we're done with the module. Uh, the homework for that module will be generally due about, it's about a week later. So whenever you see it on the syllabus that a module is gonna be due on a specific Tuesday, we're pretty much gonna be done with that module on the Wednesday before, if not the Monday before. Uh, so you'll have it like the full week and weekend to get it done. There will be online quizzes. Uh, there, it's only 10% of your grade. It's often based on questions from the reading and it will be in Canvas if they're multiple choice. Uh, okay. So homework will be 35% of your score. <laughs> Quizzes are 10. Then we have the two online exams. Uh, they're gonna be worth 25% total. So 12 and a half each really. I, on the Wednesday or the, the, the Wednesday where I have listed on the calendar, uh, when they're due or when they start the exams, we don't actually have a class scheduled that day for lecture or anything like that. So I, I'm gonna discuss it. We can take a little poll. We'll do a survey actually through email or through Canvas to see what you guys want. Either on the day, the two days where an exam starts, we can either have the exam start at four o'clock and I can be available online to answer any questions that might pop up for the, the timed portion uh, or we can do it afterwards. We can go through and do like a review thing uh, in addition to what we've been doing before. And then I can start the exam after the class starts up. Uh, but after that, I'm gonna be ready to go hang out with my wife and have dinner. So I won't be around to answer questions. Uh, so it's something to think about, but you'll have, like we said earlier, you'll have from Wednesday to Saturday night at midnight, 11.59 PM. I tried putting 12 and people got confused with 12 AM and 12 PM. Uh, so we, we just went with 11.59 PM and 12.01 AM for some of the things. Uh, that, that, the test was worth 25% that so far that adds up to uh, 70. The final will be worth 30. You'll have from the 9th through the 14th uh, to do that as well. So regular grading scale system, okay? If you are curious about the code of student contact, I was telling you don't cheat. There is stuff in the catalog in the COS website on student conduct and what's considered cheating. Submitting someone else's work as your own is considering cheating. Uh, threatening colleagues or peers with violence and stuff like that is against the code of student contact, stuff like that. Don't do any of this stuff like that. I know the code of student conduct, some of it can say some weird stuff, but for the most part, it's important. Cheating is one of them. Most of you know what cheating is. Uh, you should, if you didn't write it or do it on your own, you cheated. Uh, so here's the schedule again. The green ones are days that I probably are not going to be there. The other, the, the tab in the modules that shows the same calendar doesn't have color coding, so it doesn't show it very well. Uh, green ones are days that I have a meeting that I have to attend. And Adrian is going to be doing SI sessions then. I know he gets paid for several hours in the week. He might be, he should be holding SI sessions at some other time, but I don't know when that will be. Uh, and we'll give him a chance to talk and he'll be able to put stuff, make an announcement and stuff in Canvas as well to let you know when that is. Uh, for the ones posted here on the Wednesdays from four to six, you'll meet at the same spot here. Uh, if when he has his own, he's got a Zoom room for, of his own, He'll give you a link there. And once I know what the link is, I'll make a tab on over here that says Adrian Zoom room as well uh, for when he has SI sessions that are not on this list. Uh, and the calendar as well, the due date calendar. Here's a list of the topics. There's stuff that are you'll see over the course of the way. 
initializing objects, using constructors, defining a class. A lot of these stuff tend to be towards the end of the semester because I'm not going to assume anyone here knows programming. So we're going to just start with the basics and go up. If you have programming experience, this may not be the most exciting thing for you. Uh, but you might learn something. You might not. Hopefully you do. And we'll go through a bunch of this stuff. A lot of it's problem solving strategies and how to do the algorithms and stuff like that. Uh, debugging can be a pain. And I will walk you through ways that I like to use that don't involve GDB or other debugging software. And that's kind of it for the syllabus. Any questions on that? OK. Let's see. Does that, uh, did I already add myself to the Discord thing on this computer? It opens in a new tab. Let's see. That took me straight to it. Uh, let's see, invite people. Let's edit the invite link to say no limit. Generate a new link, copy. We'll put that right now in the, the announcements. How about we do that? That way I don't forget. Oh, you gotta leave student view for that one. I always end up talking so much this first day. Orientation, I get parched. By link to our Discord server, both myself and Adrian, our SI. Are in there to help free to work with each other and hang out. Insert link, external link. There you go. Okay, other module stuff. Let's let's go back to student view. <coughs> Modules. So where's the one that okay? Let's do the let's find it real quick. I have it on another tab already. What am I doing? Let's see which one had it. There we go. We'll do that. The hello, hello world program, which is in the book. I'm going to highlight it. Do you can copy, right click and copy, or you can do control C. Uh, to find Visual Studios, you can do a drop down menu over here. For some reason, I have, well, 2019 is the one I've used the most, so it has it listed there. Uh, it has, did I put 2022 on this one? Yeah, I did. Okay. Or you can type it in the search thing to get it to pop up. And this is what it will look like. I post mine. I made, I, 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 I posted it to the taskbar so that it's easy to grab. You're going to be doing a lot of stuff in here. So it's worth doing. The first thing I'll show you on the left is older programs that you've done lately. This is stuff I've all worked on over the last six months or so. Whenever we're doing something new, we're going to do create a new project for those of you using Visual Studios.
I am sharing screen, right? Yeah, it says stop share. I am sharing. Okay. Uh, if you if there's a lot if there's too much stuff up, oh, why did it go off dark mode? Rude. You can set the languages here to C++, uh, platforms. I'm using Windows. You can do whichever one you're using. Uh, project types, console. And we're going to go over the empty project. I'm going to click next. All right, couple things going on here. Project name, what you're going to name it. Uh, it's a good idea to name it like lab. We'll call this lab zero. Uh, when you're submitting it, it'll prompt you in the, the assignments to use your name. It's a good idea to put your last name and then your first name. That way it's easy to find and, and grade for you. Where are you going to save it? It, it? it will default oftentimes to this repo one that it likes to do, repository. Uh, it can be a pain in the ass to find. I recommend browsing to a new spot. Maybe going to your desktop and making a folder there. Uh, I, I made one called CSAI Labs for students or for the semester. So I'm going to go there and stay there. And that's where I'll work on it. So I'll, I'll select that folder. That'll be my folder. And now it's on my desktop and I can go find it later on. And the reason why I say that is because when we do assignments, you're going to need to do that. And I'll just say create. <clears throat> so this is just, if you can get this running on your, uh, when you get your IDE installed, I'll show you this in the W3Schools website in a second. Uh, you're going to be good to go. All right, first thing, I don't like the this background. I want the dark background. So I'm going to go Tools, Theme, Dark. The reason why is when you're programming, you're, the, the strain of the white can get bad on your eyes if you're like, why is it not switching? There we go. Having the black background with white text though is a lot easier on your eyes. Okay. You're going to see three folders here. We were going to work with header and resource file folders later on near the end of the semester. Almost everything we're going to do in here is source files. So you can click on that, right click it and say add new item. And the video I have in, in Canvas that shows creating a new program, uh, if you don't have an IDE installed yet, you can see it there without having to wade through all of this video. We're going to use the CPP one mostly later on when we do the header file over here. We'll use the header file, but this is the one we're going to use. You can change the name. I'm going to name it what I named my program. And it will open up a brand new file. And it's empty. This is like a text file, really. But what I'm going to do is I, I copied that stuff earlier. I'll paste it here. Uh, what you should do for all your programs is you should put your name at the top. You should put the date. And you should put a description of what it is. Uh, this is my first program. Hello world. Now, as it's listed right there, I'm just type. I hope I hope you guys know how to type without hunting and pecking. That'll make this a lot faster for you. Uh, as it is right now, see they're all white letters. This is this is text. These are characters the computer is going to want to use. And notice it says, "Identifier David is unfound." It thinks David is a command. So we don't we don't want to do that. We want to make it look like a comment. There are a couple ways you can do that. The first way you can do it is you can see it down, by, down here is a couple forward slashes. 
On the IDE or Visual Studio 2022, text goes green when it turns into a comment. Uh, and that's what this is called. So green text after two slashes is a comment or documentation, it's sometimes called. Uh, so you can do that. Another thing you can do is you can do the forward slash once, then do the asterisk key to start it. And when you want commenting to end, you can do asterisk and forward slash again. Okay. This generates a block of commenting. This is a multiple line block. of comments is uh, for you and anyone using your program. Okay. Uh, this IDE, I don't know about other ones, has other nice useful tools. If you want to comment or uncomment, there's something over here on the right. See how I highlight it? It says comment and uncomment. If I click uncomment, it gets rid of all the comments around the, the thing. And now it starts looking at things as commands. For is a command. Using is something that the computer recognizes. But if I highlight it again and I click comment again, that one, it comments it all out, which can be handy. That's a handy tool, but that's a, a way to comment. You'll want to have, when you're turning in labs, the first three lines should be those three. Okay. Here it says include and it says iostream.h. Uh, it, it's oftentimes we're not going to use iostream.h. We'll just do iostream. Include is a pre processing directive. It's telling us to use the iostream library. And now that I got rid of the .h, it doesn't like it because it doesn't know what it is. So we'll add one more line. It says using namespace. STD. Uh, and once I hit enter, it should recognize it. Notice that, let me comment that out real quick. When I don't have it, this one, where'd it go? Doesn't have the red underneath anymore. Anytime it's got red squiggle and you're using this IDE, if it's got squiggles underneath it, it doesn't recognize what you're doing. Uh, and it shows up over here. See the little red box over here? It's got a, it's saying when you're at, when this line's there, you've got a problem there. And here it's on the void. I'll say using namespace STD again. We'll cover namespace a lot more later on. You don't really use it a whole lot this semester. If you've got using namespace STD, you're good to go. STD is the standard library where a lot of the stuff is. We're telling it to use with the pre-processing directive include. Again, you don't need to know that it's called a pre-processing directive, but you do need to know include. We're telling it to use the IO stream library. IO stands for input output. Uh, so we're using the input output stream. And that's commonly what we're going to start everything with. So you should have those two in there almost every single time. Very few programs don't have an input or an output somewhere. Uh, in fact, how do you run a program and use it if it's got no output? It doesn't make any much sense. So you should have those in there. Uh, this has void main. Void main is an option. Another one is int main. I'm gonna do int main and I'm gonna put void in here. Every program in C++, has a main function. This is a function. And what it's telling you right now is that void is the input of the function. So I'll make a little comment here. I can do it at the end of the line here. Int is the output type. Int stands for integer. Main is the name of the main function.
And the void is the input area. Void means no input. You'll get really used to using that. Uh, since I did say I put in out here rather than void, I do need to return an integer. Zero is an integer. When it gets zero back, it will end the program. Okay. So what happens when we do, when we actually run a program and how, how does this help us? This is the, the C++ is this high level language. What it's going to do is it's going to send it, it's going to compile it into the binary language or the machine language, uh, which is a bunch of ones and zeros. Uh, and so that's what the computer is going to use. There's uh, an assembly language in between there. We don't need to know any of that. We just need to know that we're going to take this language. We got to link the libraries that we're going to use. That's what we're doing here. We link libraries that we're using. Then we're going to compile it, generate the program, and run it. Uh, and you can do project. You can do these actually one at a time. Where is it? Build. Build, compile, or and then run it. But if we do this local Windows debugger right here, good idea. There's a save thing. It's often a good idea to save frequently. If you hit this, it's gonna it's gonna link the libraries. It's gonna compile it for you into the language the computer knows, binary, and then it's gonna run the program. There, are build error. What's the build error? What? Okay, rude. I'm going to copy this over and show you in the W3 one real quick. So I put the same code here. And when I run it here, it's going to compile it. And it prints out what it's doing. So we'll go back to the code and look at what's happening. I might just need to restart this. In fact, I can. Let's restart it real quick. In fact, that's a good way to show you how to get back to projects you were working on. So I'm going to close out. Oh, cancel. Save all. Now close it. So when you want to get back into a project you were working on, if you had to log off for a while or you got late, open it back up. 2022, I got it on my taskbar down here. There are a couple of ways to access it. I can either click on this one and go do it directly like that. And it's loading. Okay. See if running it this time works. See if that fixed it. No. It's saying it cannot open the program. Why is it saying OneDrive? That might be the problem. Okay. Let's go try that one more time. Oh, 
Oh, doing control recording with the Windows Jeep thing. That might have been the problem. I don't have any memory on my computer. It doesn't want to run it. Okay, so another way to open it once you've also looked it up is you can go open a project or solution. And it will tell you to go find the file. I put it on my desktop. I called it CSCI Labs, Lab Zero Jones. And then choose the solution, SLN. Uh, it may take you a second to find it. SLN's right here. That's what we're going to grab. I think it has problems with memory right now because I just did a big video thing and it's eating up the memory. Uh, we could talk about a little bit more of what's going on in this program. This C, this is not count or it's stand, it's read as C out. You will hear me say C out all the time. Why does it have a problem there now? Turn zero. Let's try that. I wonder what the problem is. Okay, so C out is a command in the IO stream library. What it says is I want to send stuff into the output stream. That's what C out does. These double less than signs, they're called an insertion operator. So what we're going to do is we're going to insert what comes next into the output stream. And that'll send it to the out wherever we designate as the output. C out is designated to be uh, the monitor. Now I've got stuff in quotation marks. This is called a string literal. Why is my computer running so slow? This is called a string literal, what goes inside the parentheses. Uh, the reason why it's completely bugged. Let's close that and just talk in there. All right, so the, this, this is a string literal between the quotation marks. It's why it's called a string is if you've ever decorated a Christmas tree with a popcorn string, a popcorn string is literally just a bunch of pieces of popcorn on a string. Uh, this is a bunch of characters string together in a row. So they call it a string literal. Okay. Uh, so whatever you want to go to the screen needs to be in quotation marks. Uh, or we, as you'll see when we start doing more with C out on Wednesday, uh, what else will happen? Uh, other ways of doing it. We have our insertion operator again, and then this looks like end one. This is really end line. So E-N-L-E stands for end line. And it's going to make stuff, make it do like a carriage return or go to the next line. If I want to do more stuff with it and add another line, say like, sup folks, gamers rock. And I do end line again, I can do it again. When I run it, it'll show it as two lines. as we can see over here. Uh, the only line that does not have, the lines that do not have a semicolon at the end are the, where we're including the IO stream. Everything else should have a semicolon at the end. The semicolon at the end says, tells the computer, this program stops this command here. In fact, I can break these up on different lines. and run it. Wow, okay, so not on this one. In a regular IDE, this works just fine. 
That does not work just fine right here. So I'll do more of that with the ID later. Uh, any questions? Okay, uh, when, you, when you're doing stuff and you need to insert or uh, submit something, let's go over here to the browser, find the CSCI labs. It didn't actually officially run yet because I have too much memory blogged up trying to do double videos all simultaneously, piss the computer off. Uh, but I did have one here. If you go in, what you're going to be submitting are the ones that say CPP. So those are the ones you need to find. And it's generally in within, once you've gone into the first name of the folder that you've done, then you can go into the second one where it's named and you'll find it there. When we're looking over here at this stuff, one of your first assignments, it's not due for over a week, but it has you do stuff similar. You're gonna modify this program. It's not hello world, it's hello C++. Uh, when you're submitting it, you're gonna do start assignment and then you can upload it. And this is why it's handy to pick a spot where you know where it's at. I gotta go find and tell it where to find it. So I had it on my desktop, I was in my CFCI labs. The one I was just looking at was in there, was there, and is that one. And I can say open. Wow, yeah, my memory's shot. This is bad. I gotta purge my computer tonight. Uh, you shouldn't have any problems uploading it though when you do it. And then you click submit, okay? Uh, for now, until you need to, you can, if you're using the W3 schools one, you can do it as a text entry, but I don't want to see it there for more than a couple weeks. Like, I don't want this all semester. So you can do code there. Another way to make code uh, that you can submit if you're using W3 schools for a little bit and you want to submit the file is you can search for notepad or wordpad or whatever document you want. And I can paste the text here. And I can do file, save as. And I'm going to change that away from text document. Uh, mylab.cpp. And Go tell it to save it back in that lab folder. And then I could go find it there. File upload, I could choose file. And I just saved it right there. Okay, so there's a couple ways of doing it uh, and opening the projects stuff like that. We will do a lot more of this later on. I just wanted to show you a little bit of how it works. Uh, show you how to install the program. Again, when you're cancel, click cancel. Go through this orientation module. It'll have the website where you can get the program. Or Visual Studios is on the Visual C++. And these are other activities to do this week. Introduce yourself needs to be done by Wednesday. And that's it for today. Adrian, you got anything you want to say? <clears throat> um, yeah, I, I just wanted to give myself or give you all a little introduction to who I am. Um, as Professor Jones said earlier, I'm your guys' SI for the semester. Um, and if you're not familiar with SI, basically what it is, is uh, I guess you could think of them as, as like group study sessions. So if you guys need help with any any assignments for this class, um, you know, you can come to me and come to my sessions and we'll work on it together. I can clear up some questions or concerns that you guys may or may not have. Um, and yeah, I'm kind of just like a 
almost like a TA. I don't actually grade anything. I just kind of help Jones whenever he needs it, and I help you guys whenever you guys need it. Um, so these sessions, they will be held. I have them scheduled for an hour before class. So if you guys have a free hour, you guys want to work on some CSI before going to CSI, we can actually go ahead and, and work on that. Um, as for the exams, I want to hold a little bit longer study sessions, probably on the on the Saturday, right before the weekend before. Yeah, the Saturday before you, you guys have your exam. So if you guys have an exam on Wednesday, I would hold it on Saturday. Um, I don't have a set time for those. I'm really flexible on that, but um, I want to shoot for some time kind of after 12 because, you know, people tend to sleep in on Saturdays because, well, it's Saturday. Um, and yeah, so I will set up, um, I have a remind set up. I'll make an, an announcement that you guys can join. That way we can stay in contact a little bit easier. We can also communicate on Discord if you're more comfortable with Discord. Um, I just want to make it, you know, all options available to you guys. And um, uh, yeah, other than that, it's, yeah, I guess if you guys have any questions, you can come and talk to me, talk to uh, David or, uh, yeah. If you guys don't have any questions, then uh, that's all I really had for you guys. Okay. Uh, after this week, I don't think it's going to happen the first week. I think starting next week, there's something called Friday Night Labs. It's on campus. It's on Friday nights. It's 5.30ish uh, to late. Uh, people are there till after 9 or 10. We do a lot of projects. There's uh, We've got etchers. We've got people programming. We've got all sorts of like little building projects. There's people working on little engineering tasks. They've reconstructed a pinball machine. Uh, they've designed a augmented reality programs. A lot of little workshops. I'll share more information with that with you guys later when we have that. Uh, but yeah, I hope you guys are looking forward to this semester. I hope you guys don't mind talking, communicating. It's, It'll get boring. Feel free to stop me and ask questions anytime. And Adrian, um, when you have your your uh, if you do an announcement for your Zoom link, I can make a little <laughs> button on the left so that they it's a quick quick grab for them too. Awesome. Um, okay. I also wanted to mention that um, even if you guys if you can't get a hold of me like during SI or anything like that, um, the Mesa Center on the Visalia campus, I do tutor there. So if you need help for um, for CSI and like I'm not holding a sign or anything, you can go ahead and go in there. I'm usually in there all pretty much all day, every day. <laughs> so um, yeah, and even if you need help with any other subjects, I could definitely help with that too. All right. You, this is your time to ask questions. I'm about to ready to click stop record and go eat dinner if you guys don't have anything. Sorry, could you? Um... Share the screen. Share your screen on that uh, website again, just so I can jot those last couple of things down. I didn't get. Yeah, uh, you can actually uh, this one right here. Yeah. Sure. And if you want it, the actual link to this, it's in Canvas. I'll show you where that is too. If you're jotting down the website, you don't need to. I'll show you where the link is. Yeah, I was jotting down what you uh, wrote down yeah, in the uh, okay. notes. No. Yeah. All right. Thank you. In fact, I'll copy this and post it as an announcement. Our first program. That's a that's a good idea. I like that idea. Leave student view. Is that why you're upset? There's two of them open. Announcement. Our first programming. Here be the code. Oop. All right, I'll post that. Any other questions? Please feel free to ask questions. I don't bite. All right. I'll uh, see you guys on Wednesday. Uh, try to have it installed before Wednesday. That way, if you've got any, and, and log into Discord if you can. Join Discord. 
if you've got problems, that's an easy spot to show screenshots of what's going on. So we can like try to help everyone get aboard. That way we're not trying to do it in class hours if everyone hops on. Peace out guys. <laughs>